The two biggest positions of need heading into the Big 12 for the Cincinnati Bearcats. You heard John Garcia Jr. mention them on yesterday's show. Today, I take a deeper dive into those two positions on Locked On Bearcats. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And on this Friday, June the 3rd, we thank you very much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. It's free and available everywhere you get your podcasts. And on YouTube, the Locked On Bearcats YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button while you're there. We're at 130 subscribers and counting, but we're not done yet. Far from it. So hit that subscribe button. Follow us to get an alert every time a new episode drops. Alex Frank, your host each and every day, former sports director of Bearcast Media, where I was a play-by-play announcer for Bearcats football and men's basketball and a weekly sports radio show host and bringing all of those experiences here to Lockdown Bearcats, where today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, running back is, as John Garcia Jr. mentioned on yesterday's show, the biggest position of need on offense heading into the Big 12 if you're the Cincinnati Bearcats. And I think that there is a lot of merit and a lot of validity to that. Remember how I said earlier this week in my seven steps to success that I did on Monday for how the Bearcats can have seven steps Cincinnati needs to take to have a successful 2022 season. One of those steps was they need a dominant running back. Well, that's going to be ultra important heading into the Big 12. It's now more important forever than ever this season for Cincinnati to establish that. Whether it's Ryan Montgomery, who has multiple years left of eligibility, whether it's Charles McClellan, who is a little bit older, more experienced, he may not be around when Cincinnati goes to the Big 12, whether that's Ethan Wright, whether that's Miles Montgomery, there needs to be a bell cow running back, whether that's Corey Kiner. You know, that's the interesting thing. And I can't believe I didn't mention this on, I didn't mention him on Monday. I just don't know who's going to be that bell cow running back. I don't know where Corey Kiner fits in this offense. I think he's an, I think he should be an immediate starter. Maybe I'll start a campaign for that. By the way, this is your segment reminder that Evan Prater should be the starting quarterback for the Bearcats this upcoming season. Corey Kiner could be the bell cow running back. And I think it would be instrumental if he is. God, now I look stupid for what I said on Monday. I completely disregarded Corey Kiner. I've been campaigning too hard for Evan Prater, a quarterback. I forget his his Cincinnati buddy is now back home playing running back for the Bearcats. Okay, so maybe he's the bell cow running back. All right, that's great. Kiner's got, what, three years of eligibility left? Perfect. Establishes himself as the bell cow running back this year. Boom, you're set going in the Big 12 with him and Evan Prater, a quarterback. Cincinnati, when they've been successful the last 15 years, Isaiah Peed, Michael Warren, Jared Dokes, Jerome Ford, a um, handful of other running backs you can throw in there, they have been at their best when there is a bell cow leading the way on offense. And look at the running backs that have come through the Big 12 over the last 15 years. Chuba Hubbard, most recently. Joe Mixon. He's doing great things with the Bengals, by the way. Adrian Peterson. Samaj P. Ryan. He's had a good career for the Bengals so far. Those are all bell cow running backs. Running backs who carry the ball 300 times a season. And imagine having a multi-dimensional offense. See, you heard John and I talk about yesterday. You you heard me and John talk about it. I gotta make me excuse me. You heard me and John talk about it yesterday. That when we think of the Big 12, we think of quarterbacks and receivers. But running backs have become more prevalent in that conference. You look at the the numbers. The average number of rushing yards by a team in 2014 was 167.3. That number jumped to 173.7 last year. There aren't as many, there were more teams in 2014 that averaged 200 yards rushing per game. Three teams did that. Last year, there was only, I believe, one team that averaged over 200 yards a game. 
rushing in the Big 12. It might have been two. But more, but the number, but the rushing numbers for every team was much closer to one another. And it was and it was much higher than it was in 2014. I know it's only a jump of 6.4 yards, 6.4 yards a game, but that's almost a first down. I mean, that's almost half the yards needed to move the chains. And the longer you keep your offense that's balanced out on the field, it's going to tire out defenses. Defenses already struggle in the Big 12. Imagine having balance on offense. There have been great quarterbacks that have come through the Big 12. There have been some great wide receivers that have come through the Big 12. But running back is becoming more prevalent. If you can have balance to your offense, that is going to make you very difficult to beat. And you saw with Cincinnati last year. You saw how balanced they were on offense. One game it was Desmond Ritter chucking the ball all over the field. Another game it was, we're just going to run the football straight at you, try and stop us. I think in the UCF game, Ritter threw the ball maybe 23 times. Jerome Ford carried the ball over 20 times that game for around 200 yards and four touchdowns. Cincinnati could beat you, could beat teams multiple ways last year. If they can do that, beat teams multiple ways heading into the Big 12, this offense is going to be hard to stop. Gino Gadulli is going to establish himself as a really good offensive coordinator. If he has balance to his offense, and the way Cincinnati has recruited running backs under Luke Fickle, guys like Mike, guys like Michael Warren and Jared Dokes, and getting transfers like Jerome Ford and Corey Kiner, and getting other running backs like Ryan Montgomery and Charles McClellan and Ethan Wright, highly touted running backs, three stars, four stars. They're only going to be able to do that more so once they get into the Big 12. You can start dipping into guys in Texas. You can, you can dip into Louisiana, Florida, California maybe, you know, Pennsylvania. Of course, Ohio's produced a handful of, of great running backs them, itself. The, the, the number of disposable options in recruiting is going to be insane. And that's only going to help the Bearcats on offense if you're able to recruit multiple running backs. It's a position that you feel like is going away in football. I don't think it is. I mean, look at what Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor did last year or over the last two years in the NFL. Look at Joe Mixon last year. Behind a poor offensive line, he still had over 1,000 yards. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to James Rapine and Jake Lisko on Locked On Bengals, and they're talking about Joe Mixon you know, having 2,000-yard season. I mean, that it, it, running backs are absolutely prevalent today, especially if you can have a good receiving back. You know, guys, a, a, a guy like an Austin Eckler or a guy like um, – in, in years past, we've seen Matt Forte, LaDainian Tomlinson, Marshall Falk. That's going to make your offense pretty hard to stop in the Big 12. Up next, what about the defense? Cincinnati knows a thing or two about that. We know that. But there's one change I want to see to their defense heading into the Big 12. I'll explain next. But first, I got to tell you about Bet Online. They're your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. You can find all of the latest odds, or I'm sorry, developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship matchup between the Celtics and the Warriors, the NHL Hockey Conference Finals, boy, those are off to a sizzling start, Major League Baseball, and of course, all the latest fighting news from MMA and UFC to boxing. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information. You can head to the website today for live betting, esports, and more, or you can use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online where the game starts. We have an important favor to ask you here on Lockdown Bearcats. We've put together a survey so we can learn more about listeners like you and make your favorite Lockdown podcast even better. So this is your opportunity to tell us what you like and don't like about Lockdown Podcasts. So go to LockdownPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long, and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockdownPodcast.com slash survey. Thank you in advance for your help. Another important announcement, Alex Frank here with you, Lockdown Bearcats each and every day. So the college offseason is here. That means uh, the network allows college and the NFL 
the college and NFL channels to do just three podcasts a week. It's, it's our quote unquote off season. I don't anticipate on making it three episodes a week. No, we're keeping it at five. We got momentum going. You've subscribed. You've been listening. So we're going to keep delivering the content that you deserve. Another important announcement. Evan Prayer should be the starting quarterback for the 2022 season. Alex Frank here with you once again. Did I say my name twice in like a minute? No. Okay. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about defense. Because we know Cincinnati prides itself on that side of the ball. However, they're going to have to change from a 3-3-5 to a 4-3. You saw in the Cotton Bowl last year, Alabama just gashed Cincinnati with their run game. 300 rushing yards in that game. First time Cincinnati has given up 300 yards rushing since I couldn't even tell you when. That's how good their defense is. But a 3-3-5 will not work in the Big 12. It won't. It simply will not. Remember John mentioned yesterday how important it is to get after the quarterback? They're going to have to do that in the Big 12. You can't do that if you have a 3-3-5. Three, three, you saw MyJ Sanders when he got double teamed last year. There was no other, there was no rusher, edge rusher on the other side of the ball to help out. None. If you go to a 4-3, you've got two guys to get after the quarterback. That puts an onus on Noah Potter to come into his own this season. The more you can get after the quarterback, the better. The more your defense stays off the field in the Big 12, the better. Defenses have to be gashed. I mean, I've joked for years that the Big 12 hasn't known defense since the days of the Alamo. So you have to be able to get after the quarterback. Baylor and Oklahoma State led the conference in sacks last year. And I said last year with the Bengals in the AFC North, the more you can keep your defense off the field, and win the battle in the trenches, it's going to allow your offense to function, and it's going to keep opposing defenses on the field longer. And that was especially true last year. Complementary football is something Luke Fickle has talked about for a long time. You're definitely going to need that in the Big 12. We know the Bearcats' offense is, is equipped and capable to play in the Big 12 this year. Surely in 2023 they will be too. But they need to be ready on the defensive side. You know, they need to be able to get after the quarterback. We know they can. They had 39 sacks in 14 games last year. That's an average of just under three a game. But you you can't simply just rely on turnovers. You need to be able to get after the quarterback. Get your defense off the field. The more And if you make offenses one-dimensional, we know Big 12 offenses can throw. We saw Kyler Murray do it. We saw Jalen Hurts do it when he was at Oklahoma. We saw, you know, we've seen Sam Ellinger. We've seen a handful of quarterbacks who have done it in the Big 12. And we've seen some great receivers come out of that conference. But if you can make offenses one-dimensional, make the quarterback have to go win the game by himself, even if he can, like a Kyler Murray, it's still going to be difficult. If the quarterback has to do every single little thing, the more you can keep your de your defense off the field and you can win the battle in the trenches, there are two things Luke Fickle has talked about that are going to absolutely be paramount to the Bearcats' success in the Big 12. Being driven through the trenches and complimentary football. Win the battle in the trenches, you know, your offense is running up the score and your defense is, and your defense is not allowing the opposing offense to score. Luke Fickle has been preaching things that have going to help Cincinnati immensely once they joined the Big 12. And you think about the great things he's done as a head coach, those two things that he's preached, it's what's going to help Cincinnati succeed immediately in the Big 12. So getting after the quarterback is immense because Big 12 runs spread offenses. But if you win that battle in the trenches on the defensive side, and you have the quarterback on the ground constantly throughout the game, it is going to make for a long night for that offense. You know, the Big 12 is a high-scoring league. We know that. Then again, the championship game last year was 21-16 to because those two teams, Baylor and Oklahoma State, know how to play defense. Up next, speaking of defense, so we all know Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant were stars the last two seasons with the Bearcats, but there's one player who was not on last year's team, 
and he's kind of been forgotten, I feel like, a little bit. I'll tell you who that player is next after a word from two of our sponsors. Final segment on of Friday, which means it's the final segment of the week, which means it's my final segment. Reminder this week that Evan Prater should be the starting quarterback for the 2022 season. Alex Frank here with you. Locked on Bearcats each and every day. So, James Wiggins, remember him? Remember when he was the was like that first star player for the Cincinnati Bearcats under Luke Fickle? Remember when he was the most talked about player? Remember when everybody loved him and it was like it always felt like he was one play, any play could be the play where he makes a big hit, a big tackle, or runs a pick six back to the house against SMU. It was always, it, it could happen any play. It feels like to me that we have forgotten about him. Because of how good Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant were, we have kind of forgotten about how good James Wiggins was. Unfortunately, we never got to see his full potential, his full arsenal on display. We know how good he was in 2018. In the revitalization year of Cincinnati Bearcats football, Wiggins was the best player. Wiggins had, there are three plays you can point to where James Wiggins impacted the game. First, the... um. The interception is sealed the victory against Ohio at the goal line. 34-30, Bearcats win the game. Week, week 9 at SMU, pick 6, 80, I think it was 86 yards. 86 yards, pick 6 to win the game. And finally, the military bowl, an interception to seal the deal there. And there was one more play. I feel like he had a safety or something against UCLA. That might've been Brian Wright, but I think it was the, I think he had an interception at UCLA to kind of get the Bearcats going in that game, if I remember correctly. So really four plays that he made that season and you knew he was going to deliver. He was a freak at safety. So much so that Bruce Feldman from the athletic in his annual freaks list, James Wiggins was on there in 2018. And that was after he didn't even play that much in 2017. But boy, did he break out in 2018. And I just feel so bad for him. Two days before the season started. Two days. Well, really three. But I found out two days. I'll never forget it. I'm walking to Luke Fickle's press conference, leading up to the season opener versus UCLA. And Sean McMahon, of course, took over for me as sports director. I see him in Nippert Stadium, and he tells me James Wiggins is hurt, and I'm like, oh boy. We then found out he tore his ACL. Sean knew it was bad before we all did. I didn't say anything, so I didn't know. No one really knew. It was all speculation until it was confirmed. Sean at that time worked for the football team, so he knew it was bad. He told me it wasn't good. That was disheartening. I always wonder if he hadn't torn his ACL before that season opener and didn't and played that season, what he would have been like and what that team would have been like. He was a rising star. He was Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant before Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant. And for as admirable as Javon Hicks played that season, you miss James Wiggins because he's the most rec- he was the most recognizable player. He was the big face of the defense, the big face of the secondary which has been an absolute strength for the Bearcats the last few years. James Wiggins was the star before the stars came in. It's who Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant became. We remember those two and Desmond Ritter for their success, and they helped the Bearcats achieve it and their high drive number of draft picks this past year. But the first real big star of of the Luke Fickle era was James Wiggins. And Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant, their success, it makes me feel like we've kind of forgotten about him. And we shouldn't have. We shouldn't. He was a freak in the secondary. Recency bias has a, has a really powerful thing of making you forget about a player who was really good 
before the stars actually came. But I don't want us to forget about how much of a physical freak James Wiggins was. How big, strong, fast he was. He could hit hard. He could tackle. He could make a big play. He could rush the quarterback. He could put the boom on you. It's a shame we never got to see the full potential of his career play out. It really is. That's going to do it for me here this week on Locked On Bearcats. Coming up next week, we're going to start off on Monday. Uh, we're going to go with the seven players who are who are most integral to the Bearcats' success this season. The seven players who will have the most say and productivity in the Bearcats' success this season. Season. We're also going to effort a few of a few high-profile guests for this month of June. The College Channel's down to three days a week. Locked On Bearcats is staying five days a week. Thanks for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to the Locked On NBA Big Forward Podcast with Raphael Barlow, Richard Staben, Sam Ferris, and Leif Thulin, giving fans an in-depth look into the biggest prospects, the latest player rankings, and of course. Follow Locked on NBA Big Board every day on the and wherever you get your podcasts. As for me, you can follow me on Twitter at Frankie underscore 90 with two N's and an ATI. You can follow me on Instagram, AlexFrank9 underscore, and email me at Alex3Frank at gmail.com. We're up to 130 subscribers and counting on YouTube, the Lockdown Bearcats YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button, follow us so you can get an alert every time an episode drops. And Make sure you subscribe on an audio platform where you download podcasts from Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you download podcasts from. Share a comment and or give it a rating as well. All of that helps more Bearcats fans like you find us. For the Lockdown Bearcats podcast, I'm Alex Frank. Thank you for listening, making it your first listener watch every day, and have a great weekend.